if you're a football fan. Or you like desperate Dan. If, if you're, you're a, a bit of a cook, cook. Or you like a good book, don't delay. To have, have your say, say yeah. yeah. Do, Do it right away. Right away, yeah. yeah. Do it right away. Give your mates a scare. Tell them you really care. Have you had a good day? Wanna have, have your say? Don't, don't delay. To right away, yeah. Do it right away. Right away, yeah. Do it right away. Right away. Larry, Larry, are there any writers out there who need our help today? Um, I do hope so, because we're the writing, writing rescuers. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. A cake. What has a cake got to do with writing? Before you bake a cake, you need a recipe. Ah, yeah. what's a recipe? A list of instructions. Oh. But I think somebody needs our help. Oh. The writing, writing rescuers, rescuers to the, the rescue! <laughs> <laughs> Seven-year-old Joshua and his dad Gordon love cooking. Here we go, Joshua. Thanks, Dad. So, Joshua, can your dad cook everything? He could cook everything but cakes. <laughs> What's happening on Saturday? I'm having a party. Oh, can I come? Of course you can. Oh dear. Joshua is inviting loads of friends to his party. But his dad can't cook cake. <laughs> what a huge pile of recipe books. It looks really heavy. It is. Dad must be able to understand one of these. Oh, not come to that one, not. How's it going? Terrible, terrible. I haven't found one yet that I can do. They're all too complicated. Oh dear. The wooden spoon, uh huh. Gordon is on yeah. the phone to yeah, his mum. She'll tell, tell him how minutes. to bake a cake. Well, Let's that. just hope Gordon can read his notes. Minutes. Great. That's wonderful, Mum. Thanks then. Bye. <laughs> hang on, hang on, wait, 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 wait. Sieve the flour. Right, take it out, come on. Oh, Dad! <laughs> oh, no, come on, this can be right. Let's get this. Oh, <laughs> oh. Hang on, hang on, wait, 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 wait. We've got to grease it in first, so take it out. <laughs> oh, Dad! Oh, my goodness! Joshua, the cake! The cake! Completely ruined it! Oh, I'm sorry! What was I doing now, eh? I can't start again. Why did Joshua's dad find it so hard to follow the recipe he had written? Ooh. Don't worry, Joshua. We know just the person to help solve your problem. Hello, mate! Hey! I hear you got a problem with your cake. Let's sort it out then, shall we? Go on. Jamie Oliver is a young chef who's always on the telly because he's written a best-selling cookery book. He's young, he's fun, and I think he's gorgeous. Hey, Jamie, wait for me. So, Joshy boy, my old mate, I heard you had a bit of a nightmare with the old cake. Yeah. What did it look like? It's terrible. What did it taste like? Disgusting. Mess? Yeah, everywhere. Oh, God. Right, grab the notepad, mate. You're in luck, because I'm going to be cooking for a very special TV celebrity tonight. <laughs> That's me! So, first things first, is that we get the ingredients right and we get them in order of the recipe. So I need butter. Lovely. Thank you. And we're going to keep it out of the fridge so it's nice and soft, yeah? I need sugar. Right, you little monkey. Second thing, caster sugar. Let's go. I need self-raising flour. I need eggs. How many eggs do we need? Good question, mate, because that's what baking cakes is all about. How much and how many? Okay, so we need three, but unfortunately we can only buy them in half a dozen, which is six. So that's fine. Over here. Chocolate 
Chocolate oh. cake, chocolate oh. cake. Oh. 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 oh, careful. Oh, bother. I always forget that cable. <laughs> um, so, has Jamie written the recipe now? The first part. And is the first part collecting the ingredients, like Jamie did? Yes, and it's very important to get all the ingredients for the cake before you begin. Uh, why? You might get halfway through and then suddenly realise you've forgotten something really important. Like the chocolate for the cake! Exactly, <laughs> oh Larry. What's next in the recipe, Jamie? <clears throat> Why can't you just make it up? Oh, mate, you can't just make it up. You've got to be exact. If you're, not, if you're not exact about the cooking times and the ingredients, then all sorts of things can go wrong. It can be burnt on the outside and raw in the middle. It can taste horrible. So it's really important that we get it right. And the lucky thing is, these three key ingredients, right, self-raising flour, car sugar and butter, they're all exactly the same weight, 175 grams. So first of all, 175 grams of flour. Okay, so here we go. 100, 120, nearly there. There we go, perfect. So that one's done. That's it, a little bit more, a little bit more. Lovely, stop, wicked. Right, what we've got here is a pack of butter and all packs of butter are 250 grams in weight, okay? So what do you reckon is about 175? That's 250, about that much? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon. Let's see how we're going. Let's take the old paper off. Oh, look at that! Look at that! <laughs> yeah, we are good, mate. We are good. Right, Josh, what are we doing now, me old mate? Cream the sugar and butter into light and fluffy. What does cream mean? Right, basically what cream means is kind of, we're going to kind of whip and mash this butter and sugar together until light and fluffy, and basically then it will look like cream. There's lots of words like this, you know, things like kneading, sieving, folding. It's basically a doing word, so it means you've got to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And doing words are called verbs, aren't they, Jamie? <sighs> yes, nice one, Mousy. Supposing <laughs> you don't understand. Well, you won't be the first person that hasn't understood it, so what I do in my book is I put little pictures next to these words, and then, you know, because if you don't know what it looks like, then you can't make the cake. So you need to help people along. Verbs! <laughs> <laughs> what? Verb! I love verbs. Oh, yes. Good, good. Uh, why? Because a verb is a doing word. <laughs> and I like doing things. Oh, <laughs> you certainly <laughs> like running, Mousy. <laughs> yes. Well, run is a verb. Ah. Instructions are full of them. We've seen lots so far. Like? Way. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Way. Another one. Paul. Paul, yes. And any more? Mix. Mix. Nice one. If you don't know the verb, you don't know what to do. Oh. Okay, Joshy boy, what we've got to do now is get everything all together and mixed up, which you're going to do. How do you remember everything? Well, that's why we've got a recipe, mate. Recipe is a little bit like a story, really, because you have a start, a middle, and an end. And we have to make sure we get all of these in order so that the finished product is absolutely pucker. Right, so just rub all of this with butter so then it won't stick. And you don't want it to stick because that will make you look stupid. And then press it into the bottom, right, so it's all snug. And then what we're doing here? Go on, my son. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely spot on. Look at the T-shirt, mate. Look, this is a normal blue shirt before I started. This going to be as funky as me soon. Right, so what we've got to do now is divide this by two, okay? So just plop that in there. We've got the oven ready, so we can just go ahead and cook it now. Super, let's cook it. Why does the end always have to come last? What do you mean? Well, why can't the end just come first for a change? Because, hmm? um, well, because, because, well, because that's the way it is. No. Oh. It's always been like that. Oh. First you have the beginning, followed by the middle, and, and last of all, the end. That's the sequence. Sequence? Yeah. A, B, C. One, One two, two, three. three. 
You write yeah. down what to do in stages. Ah! <laughs> if you like, you can number the stages. <laughs> let's get this cake out of the oven then. Smells great. Yeah, it looks good too. Right, let's let it rest for 20 minutes, then we can turn it out. Nice one. So what do you reckon? Can we eat it now? No, nah, no. Nah, I'm going to take a picture. Oh. Yeah. Give that to your dad. Go home and cook it. Get it right. Phone me up. Tell me how it goes. But I'm going to keep this for someone very special. Hey, Mousy. Oh, Jamie. Oh. Joshua is writing up everything he's learned from Jamie. Let's hope his dad understands this recipe. Cream the sugar and butter until light and fluffy. I think that's a bit it, Joshua. So what do I do next? Then add all the remaining ingredients. Right then. Put the flour in. Served of course in advance. No bother now, eh? Right then. And in to pour it into my dish. Greased it previously. There we go. <laughs> Hey Joshua, I think this is cool and we can decorate it now. Can I do the icing? Certainly can, put it on. There you go. Yummy, yummy. Oh. Birthday dear, dear Joshua. Joshua. Happy birthday to you. Hooray! Yay! Oh, that oh. looks great. Oh, mm. oh I love cake. That cake looks delicious. Mmm, <laughs> it was. Was? Uh, I mean, it is. Mm. Um, um, yes. So let's remember why it worked out so well. Uh, okay, well, recipes come in two parts. Yes. Firstly, the ingredients. Uh -huh. The things you need before you start. And then come the instructions. They tell you what to do with the ingredients. <laughs> Brilliant, Larry. The instructions tell you what to do. And that's where you find the verbs, the doing words. Hmm. And to make it easier, you can number the instructions. But you can't make the recipe up. Oh, no. The amounts and the cooking time must be exact. <laughs> and a picture of what you're making is really helpful. Whatever it is. A paper aeroplane, a game, or chocolate cake. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to taste that cake. Mm. Cake? Uh, yes. Um, yeah. Mousy, you haven't. Would I do that to you, Larry? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, cake, 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 cake. Here, see you soon. Oh. And remember... We're, We're the, the Writing, writing Rescuers! rescuers. <laughs> <laughs> Cake time! Go and have a bit, Larry. Oh, thanks, Nancy. I knew you. Here's Here's cake. Cake. Oh, you like a good book, don't delay. Have your say, yes, do it right away. Right away, yes, do it right away. Give your mates a scare. Tell them you really care. Have you had a good day? Wanna have your say? Don't delay. Right away, yes, do it right away. Right away, yes, do it right away. Right away, right away. 
What's the writing challenge today, Mousie? Today, Larry, we've been asked to help write a football report. Oh! <laughs> yeah! On the ball with the, the writing, writing rescuers! <laughs> My name's Rory and I love football. Come on, Rory! Come on, Rory! Oh, <laughs> well done! Rory's got to write a football report about her local youth team, United Youth. Go for it. Oh dear. Oh, the Blues scored a goal there. Oh, and the Reds have got it now. Yes! United Youth scored there. It's a 1 0. The Blues have got it again. Oh, back to the Reds. Oh, one there. Crowd aren't happy. And the ref agrees. He's missed the penalty! Can I hear your report so far, Rory? OK then. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the United Youth team went against Highbury Youth with a brilliant score of 5-3. It was a great game to watch with my mates. It was a one-all draw, Rory. That's not what happened. Well, I can't remember what happened that much, so I might as well make it up. Oh, dear. Luckily for Rory, I know just the person to help. He works at the top of this huge office block for Shoot Magazine. His name is Andy Sherwood. Don't you get dizzy up here, Andy? Nah, I only get dizzy when Crystal Palace win. Hi. Hi, Rory. Mousy tells me you're having problems with your match report. Yeah. Well, I'm off to go and see Fulham play. Do you want to come and do a match report with me? Okay, then. Andy writes football reports every Saturday and this week it's First Division Fulham. I don't support Fulham. Ah, well neither do I. But the thing is, is that we've just got to give an unbiased match report and just report the facts. Well, OK. Fact! That bus is red. Mm. Fact! The world is round. Yes. Fact! There are 11 players in a football team. Absolutely. Fact! I am the most marvellous footballer ever. Uh -huh. But you've never played football in your life, Mousy. You don't even like football, and that's a fact. Mm, yes. Mm, well, anyway. A fact is something that is really true, something that's really happened. And today we're writing reports, and reports are factual. Fact! Larry is shutting down. Huh? Oh. Hm. Right, let's go and get our press passes. Today, Fulham are playing crew. Let's go and have a look at the pitch, Rory. So what do you make of it all so far, Rory? Astonishing. Well, that's quite a good word to use, and that's the sort of words we'll be looking to put in our report to describe it for the people who aren't here. Oh, hello! This is where we're going to be doing our match report. You wouldn't believe it that it's actually a press box, because yeah. there's so many fans around, but um, all the journalists sit in this little area here. How do you do a match report? The best way to do it is if you get your notepad, you draw a nice line down the middle, and if we put an F for Fulham, C for Crew, every time an event happens on the pitch, we write it down, in that team's column. So if say Fulham score, we'll say Collymore, say if Stan Collymore scores, and then say if he scores in the sixth minute, we write it in, and if it's a header, we write the word header. What other events could you use apart from goals? Well, you could have penalties, near misses, sending offs, and if we're lucky, you might even get a streaker. that Black is back this season. Mm -hmm. The referee was by far the best dressed man on the pitch. I was not so impressed with the players. They all turned up in the same outfit. What a dreadful lack of imagination. And what a fashion no-no. What are you writing? It's my football report. Football? It sounds more like a fashion report. You mean 
write about the clothes? No, a football report is about the game. It's what happens on the field of play. Well, of course I knew that, Larry. I was just demonstrating my huge knowledge of the fashion industry. Sort of getting clogged up in the middle, isn't it? I need to pass the ball around a bit more and get it out wide. Oh, there you go, Lee Clark. Get a force field, 10 minutes, and sort of got the ball and just drilled it in home, didn't you? From about 10 yards out. Excellent goal. There we go, we've got another one coming up here. We're on attack again. Fulham goal again. Powers was a looping header. Should we call it a looping header? 16 minutes gone, 2-0 to Fulham. Fulham 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 so we're not so biased in our match report though. Twenty-five minutes. Pro finally had a chance to go, and that was number ten. That was really good. Game. Thirty-five minutes. Kit Simons with a towering header there from the corner. It's three 0 to Fulham there. Yes, three 0 Do you think they're going to win? Yeah, I think they might now. Right, there's half time and three goals for Fulham and lots and lots of chances. So. I don't think Crew have got much of a chance of winning this game now, really, are they? Well, maybe they're trying to get Fulham tied so at the second half, Crew can score. Well, I hope they've got lots of energy left then, because they've got to get four goals now to win. Yeah. We need another goal, don't we? Yeah. It's getting a bit boring now. How many minutes left? the end of the game, 3-0. Yeah. No goals in the second half, but it wasn't as interesting as the first half. But um, should we go and see what the manager's got to say about it? Okay. And the sun came out just as the referee blew his whistle. Ooh. The wind dropped as the crowd waited for the action to begin. Mousy, Mousy, what are you reading? My notes. Your notes on what? On the game, Larry. I'll be quiet while I concentrate on the action. But the game's over. What? Finished. The crowd has left the ground. The players are having a bath. But I'm still taking notes about the kickoff. Notes? Notes? That's an essay. Remember what Andy said. You only need to jot down the most important facts. Who scored the goals? Who played the best? And who deserved to win? So, what happened? Oh, well, you see... Oh, I can't remember. I didn't take any notes. Rory's got a question for the manager. Do you think Fulham will get promoted this year? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. You can come again. <laughs> so, what are we up to now? Well, now we've got to write our match report. So what we have to do is look at all the facts and all the incidents that took place in today's game and decide which ones that we think are the most important. So obviously, Fulham scored three goals, so we've got to include those um, and perhaps talk about another couple of chances. Um, but we've also got to talk about Paul Bracewell, Fulham manager, and what he was saying in a press conference because Fulham have set a new record today, 12 games unbeaten, and I think that would make a nice intro for us. Yeah. Fulham set a new club record after thumping Crew, 3 0. Why do you think thumping's a good word, Rory? Because that's what Fulham did, they thumped Crew. That's our intro, nice and simple. So if we say goals from Jeff Horsfield, Barry Hales, and Kit Simons, left manager, Paul Bracewell, celebrating. 
full stop. Now we need a quote. I would say it was easy. We got about the job and we, we did it well, you know. And I'm very proud, said Bracewell. And now we can explain the game in a bit more detail. Horsfield started the celebrations when he drilled home a low shot from 10 yards after just 10 minutes. Barry Hales then made it two with a looping header from Lee Clark's cross. While Welsh defender Kit Simons made it 3-0 with a towering header from a Steve Hayward corner. So what about Crewe? Well they didn't do very well did they? Should we have a look? Well they had three chances so I guess we should talk about that as well so that our report isn't biased. Yeah. Crew's closest chance came when Mark Ferran hit the bar in the 32nd minute. So what do you do now? Now we have to write a headline. What makes a good headline then? Well, basically the headline should sum up the story in one sentence. So why don't we put something like... Fulham set new record after beating Crew. Now we need a caption to go with Mr Horsfield. Cracking goal. I think it's a cracking article. Well done, Rory and Andy. Thank you, Mousy. Thank you, Mousy. Another week, another game. Let's see how Rory gets on with this football report. Victory to United Youth by Rory Lewis. Is Lincoln United Youth will win the league? Says the manager of the team after they won 3-2 against Highbury. It was an exciting game with lots of action. Kingsley scored a fantastic header. Gorham passed a brilliant cross to Patrick, who threw to the pucker goal. But my favourite goal was by Ambrose when he blasted the ball into the back of the net. Highbury Youth made a great effort with two goals scored by Smith and Allen. Didn't Rory do well, Mousie? Yes, and let's remember why. First of all, a report is factual. You can't make it up. You must know what your report is about. Whether it's about a football match or a fashion show. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's always a good idea to take notes. Don't try to jot down everything, just the most important facts. When you write up your report, look at your notes and decide which facts are the most interesting and which order to put them in. And when you finish, think of an eye-catching headline. See you next week and remember, you're guaranteed to win every time with the, the Writing Rescuers! Rescuers. <laughs> <laughs> always win. Oh, we do, don't we? We do. We're very good at helping. Thank you. Thank you.